of aggressors. They're going to try to cross you up, shoot it in your face, and take it to the cup with a vengeance. Yep, speaking of Delir Zahan and Rahimian, these are two tough guards in this competition. Some things that Iran struggled with coming out of group play was their lack of the ability to shoot from long range consistently. Also got to take care of that ball more. The first possession belongs to Japan and Thomas Kennedy, the worm, Ochai to Yasuoka, who hit six twos in group play. He's going to miss his first attempt here in the quarterfinals. Delir Zahan. One zip, Iran. Thomas Kennedy is such a tough matchup because he's a wing, but he's very physical. He can post up, but he got that rocket launcher. Just 30 seconds in. Some of the stats that you guys are seeing uh, pop up randomly in the game. If you see P-VAL, that's player value. And that's uh, shooting efficiency. Points plus key assists, drives, dunks, block shots, buzzer beaters, rebounds, minus turnovers. I know that sounds like a some type of uh, equation. <laughs> We're gonna need goodwill hunting to figure this out. Well, I'll tell you what, for, for those that believe that 3x3 is all about highlights, there is science behind it. If you see HGL, that's highlights, that's, which includes key assists plus drives, dunks, plus block shots, plus buzzer beaters. We're giving you a 3x3 uh, course right right quick, but that's when you see those pop up, that's what that means. And of course, we'll remind you what they are throughout the, uh, the process. Just trying to give you some comprehensive stats that make 3x3 uh, unique, significant. You also hear me mention from time to time double fives or triple fives. Similar to when five on five, you hear double some, double. a double double or right. a triple double, but if you uh, reach five or go over five, you get those. Anyway. Rahimian, straight on two ball. That was bro. Iran, the only team to score so far through a minute. The Olympian, Worm, down to Kennedy. Out to Ochai. Ochai cannot land it. Kennedy using that link to snag the rebound and get the score. His 18th point of the tournament to this point. He's been impressive, Kyle. Because he's doing it all kinds of different ways. And we always mention it. and. We're going to do it again and again and again, but versatility is the term that you're looking for in 3x3, and Thomas Kennedy is the epitome of that. His Japanese team looking to earn their first medal at the Asian Cup since 2018. So a span of six years, they have gone home empty-handed. Iran have had a longer drought. All the way back to 2013, where they earned their bronze. Here comes Yasuoka. Yasuoka moving right. Got a whistle down low. As that was Rahimian trying to hold off the worm in the post. That is not an easy task. He'll check out. Iran with three fouls. DK will dip to the corner. The worm will hand it off to Yasuoka. Yasuoka. No, bruh. I should mention Yasuoka had 15 points out of group play. He gets the steal. Kennedy. And Kennedy with a key deflection. Always using his hands. He could have had his hands down and given an opportunity for a clean look and a layup to Iran. And I don't know if we keep those stats up, but deflections and steals, Kennedy must be number one in this competition so far. Oh, oh. Delir Zahan all up in his grill. The basket will count, but because the Lirzahan kicked his leg out, there will be an offensive foul attributed to Iran. That's post bucket, so the two will count. But while he was landing, he kicked his foot out. That won't be a two-piece combo. But yet and still, two to the head. 3-1 game. Won't 
get that shot up because of a shot clock violation. The ball did not touch the rim, so the clock did not reset. Off we go again. Delir Zahan coming around. He's got Rahimi. Rahimi, drop step game, going up against the worm. Lockdown defense, kicking these guys for the board. They got it cleared. Saito pulls up mid range. No. Ochai doing what he does so good, which is put pressure right away on transition. He's trying to prevent the opponent to get away and uh, clear the zone easily. He will follow you like a stalker. <laughs> You'll be wanting to file harassment on Ochai after a game. He'll stick to you like. Flies on doo doo. <laughs> I don't think we've ever used the word doo doo on a broadcast before. Is it's that just, a first? Yep. You just, uh, <laughs> we don't do do that around here. Had a ghostwriter give me that joke. Outstanding job, both of We don't do do that <laughs> around here. We are just an encyclopedia of dad jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. We got dads in the truck giving us more dad jokes. Oh, man. 3 1 contest. As Saito will get things started for the Japanese. Yasuoka waiting for the Kennedy screen. Passes the defense, left him in the rear view. Rahimia runs into trouble. Plenty of traffic and he gets hacked. Ochai's looking at me like, yeah, is that a, I think he got hit in the forehead, uh, Worm. I'm sorry. I can't argue with that call. We got two very seasoned officials in Edmund Ho and Eddie Liu. And uh, you can't expect to get away with slapping somebody in the forehead, unless you're Rick James. Five fingers say to the face. Slap! There you go. There you go. All right. 6.43 to go. In a 3-2 advantage. Iran in front. Thanks to that Delir Zahan two-piece. Since then, they have not scored. They're looking to do that here and now. Here we go. It's a 14 foul against Japan. It's a very physical game, Kyle. You, you can only notice the aggressiveness defensively. They are trying to contest every single movement, and it's on both sides. I can't give advantage to uh, either side defensively in the sense of appreciating the passion on both ends and the energy provided by both teams. Long ball, oh. Yasuoka. He got range like a Rover owner. You like oh. that. I know you liked it. You're hotter than the weather right now, sir. 4-3. <laughs> Yasuoka. Uh-oh. Right. If he would have hit that, I would have I would have taken the headset off and walked away from the microphone for a second. He didn't. So I'm So I'm you're safe. safe. I'm safe. You're safe. I'll sit here for a while. Yasuoka having a seat as well. He'll get a rest for Japan as they play on with Kennedy, Saito, and Ochai. Delir Zahan with a calm drive. And then a foul on Iran. They're sixth. So I was talking about Iran, some of the things they struggle with in the, in the, in the pool play phase. Uh, they were four of 24 from two point range, and they had 15 turnovers, worst in the field. They only trail here by one. But some things that they want to make sure they clean up. Especially as we approach the midway point on this game, Rahimi, no. Contest for the ball, Kulik. That's high impact. And uh, Iran right now in trouble because they can't slow down Thomas Kennedy down low and then the aggressiveness defensively, but the over-aggressiveness defensively is getting them now in foul trouble. And the free throws for Japan gives them a great opportunity to build a lead up, even though Yasuoka 
does not convert the first one. So Walker will get another chance here. So right now, Japan's lead is at five, three, make that six, three. But Iran, not in an ideal situation defensively with seven fouls. Japan have two to give. Delir Zahan trying to give him a bucket. He can't do it as Kennedy will kick it out to Ochai. Ochai down to Kennedy. Kennedy on the block. Oh, that is bully ball. He kind of throws up a crazy shot. I think he was off balance. Delir Zahan is probably delirious after that collision with Kennedy. Looks like he's all right, though. He's good to go. Kennedy will have a seat. Yasuoka will defend Delir Zahan, top of the key. Here we go. Delir Zahan swings through. Delir Zahan chunks the deuces. He was looking at a different rim. You got to give credit to the Japanese defense, Kyle. They are preventing Iran from finding the balance between inside and outside that they have successfully found since the beginning of the tournament. And Japan oh. Japan, Bohemia. playing smart, using Kennedy and the sweet shooting from Yasuoka. On the other side, if there's one man that can wake them up, it's Rahimi for sure. Yasuoka, stroke was broken. Stays where it's at, the 6-4 game. Tough drive, Rahimi. So six to five, as we are past the midway point of this men's quarterfinal, fourth game of the day. A women's semifinal, at least one of them is set, as Mongolia will face off with Australia, New Zealand awaiting the winner of this contest right here, right now. Yasuoka sneaks behind the deep. The great pass from Saito. You know, anytime you're playing against Japan, you're gonna have a dogfight. They're gonna be scrappy defensively and they'll bring that danger from a distance that can just fall upon you at any time. Iran is gonna have it. to get it. That's, man, scoring against Ochai in the post is such a hard thing to do. This is what I was making a point about the Japanese team yesterday. You know, while Ochai isn't too 09 or two, you know, he's got enough size to where he's not a liability in the post. Ochai stands 195, but he plays much bigger. And he has a, a lifelong experience of 3x3. He understands the little details that help you defensively, what you can get away with, what you're not supposed to do. Very crafty right. defensive player, crafty passer too. The reason why he survived in this league as long as he has, as Saito will try to add to this Japanese lead with a second free throw attempt. He will not. It'll stay at three. Eight-five contest. Four minutes to play. Delirza Han, ISO game. He's got Kennedy in front of him. Oh, look at those long arms of Kennedy. I'm telling you, man. Swipe to the way. Delirza Han. Desperation shot. So Iran looked out of sync at the moment. They've managed five points to this point. Japan lead it 8-5 with 3.51 to go and a media timeout. You just hate to play against Kennedy as an opponent because he has those long segments, but he has quick hands. He's so active. He understands the game. He has a feel. He has a knack for it, as you, as you, as you would say in English. And um, offensively, he has this toughness. You've seen him go to work down low. And I'm telling you, he's a wing. He's a real three. But he has the strength of a four in this body. That's a huge advantage for Japan. As you mentioned, the versatility and the fact that Ochai plays big, even though he's 195. It's the same thing with Kennedy. Kennedy will screen. He's going to get called there. You cannot extend your arms while you set that screen. I mean, that is a... That's an easy whistle. On this, 
Kennedy did the re screen rescreen I was telling you about, mm -hmm. but Yasuoka stayed idle, did not use the screen. He was he would have been wide open under the hoop. Yes, but he also clearly pushed on the screen. <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. But the fact that Yasuoka was staying idle kind of triggered that that offensive foul. Meantime, that was Adhajan Bour who knocked down the big two there to pull Iran back within one. Uh-oh. We got a game, ladies and gents. Yasuoka missed dribbles. Delir Zahan hits the deck. That's out of bounds, I believe, off of Japan. It is. So Iran get possession. Three and a half minutes to play. Quarterfinals underway here in Singapore. A narrow miss as the worm will confiscate the Wilson. Sets the screen and for Yasuoka. Dime delivery. Count that. So precise. They make that they made that pick and roll look so easy. And, and to your point, it was patient. It the, the way that play developed was patient. And breaking it down even to a deeper level, if that initial screen did not work, well, don't get worked up. Come back, work it again. So there's a Han coming around. Oh. Foul red. And you can hear Ochai telling his team no more fouls. It's a little late for that. They are in the penalty, sir. That's seven. So two free throws coming up. Probably should have said that with, with six fouls. Anyway. Rolling. I don't, I don't know this song. It's a holla back, younger. Ooh, ooh. Oh, yeah, I do. I thought this was some kind of remix. It's just the instrumental. Holla back. Yeah. yeah. Ajahn Poor knocks it down. We're all even. It's a deadlock. The ball should be given back to Japan. Our the officials will discuss. I agree with Ochai on that one. 9-9. Nine, nine. But it went too fast, so it's a good decision to call it a jump ball. If you don't know, then you don't know. It is what it is. Fast-paced game. Things happen in the blink. Iran awarded the possession. Both teams in the penalty. Foul-wise, Delir Zahan comes around the corner. Forces the pass on the inside, and that is kicked. So that's a fresh 12-second shot clock for Iran to work with. This game is coming down to the wire. If you want to pass it up, if you want to pass it to Rahimi on the dive, you better make sure that it's a lob and not a bounce pass against Japan. Delir Zahan, step back, tough shot. He will miss it. Almost hustled it down, couldn't get to it in time. 237 officially left in what has been an absolute brawl between Iran and Japan here in this quarterfinal. Neither the, team giving up any ground. That's the right term, a brawl. Kennedy trying to loosen things up. He loses and then misses everything. Rahimian will start the possession here for Iran. Every possession so critical down the stretch. Execution is top priority. Rahimian, the long range attempt, no good, out of bounds off of Iran. And you gotta like the hustle from Ochai, boxing out, fighting for position with Rahimi, giving his all. But Iran hasn't found the ability so far to uh, create enough separation and get away from the Japanese tight defense, samurai style. Samurai style, huh? Yeah, for sure. Rahimian. Ooh! Oh, speaking of samurai, he slides the dice team. Oh, but he gets called for a travel. Got to hold that pivot foot tight. Screw it into the floor. Got to stay stable. Japan back to work. Two bucks left. 
in the quarterfinal contest between Japan and Iran. Great oh, look! What a dive! Delir Zahan drops the shoulder. Saito with a key defensive stop. 10 9. Delir Zahan has got to get up quickly. Bohemia skies for the rebound. Saito had two options, himself or Kennedy. Right now, Delirzahan's not, not moving. You see, he's gassed. But that essentially made it two on three. What we talked about yesterday, remember, whenever, like, the biggest sign of a team being gassed is when you're just watching your teammate, hoping he has enough energy to yep. be the one doing something. Like, come on, baby, because I ain't got him right now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he's back now, so only a brief rest. And he's got to stick with Yasuoka. Well, Yasuoka does him a favor and throws it away. Minute 24 left. 10-9, Japan. Anybody's game. Great defense once again. Delir Zahan, that's a good look for him. Can't hit it. Rebounded though, stays with Iran, and they will score it on the inside. Aghajan Poor has played a solid game. Is he whistled after? Is that but, the first warning? Oh, okay, warning. A delay of game warning, I'm assuming. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Been another bucket. Minute eight left, 10-10. It is, this game is stuffy, as tight as can be. Yasuoka runs into trouble. Well, don't know whether he was flopping that much. Oh, we'll take a look. We'll see right here. Yasuoka. Well, on the first contact, this one right here, I'm not sure, but the first one was not. The one on drive. Oh, yeah, stop it. Oh, oh, God. Oh, my. What a hit from Yasuoka. Right on time. Delir Zahan, no. Rahimi with the board. 40 seconds left. That's a. He didn't get it up in time. Shot clock violation. One dribble too much. But look at Yasuoka playing hero for Japan. They needed a huge bucket. You won't find one bigger than that. All net, all wet. Japan in front, under a minute to play. 12-10, 39.4 officially. Needless to say, Japan needs to manage this possession with intelligence and composure. No need to rush. Use the clock as your best friend right now. You're the one on top. Don't need to give the ball back quick. And be aggressive. Free be. throws can be the separator. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. What? That's exactly right, though. Got to be aggressive. Got to be smart because both teams obviously in the penalty. Every possession here is a premium. It is critical. Yasuoka waiting patiently for the screen. They waste four seconds off the shot clock. Ochai will rescreen. Yasuoka all day long got a look, but does not get it to go down. Those Ochai screens are a luxury to have. Even though I'd like him to do to find a better angle, as you're doing him flat, you're giving an opportunity to your opponent to switch from under a bit easier. If you do it, not like a Spain pick, what we call like a flat back pick mm -hmm. that's what you call the spain pick because the spanish national team with gasol and navarro and all these guys made it very famous a long time ago and the name was in honor of them but just give like a 45 degree angle and now you're really putting pressure on the defense what do you do do you go over do you go under and you got to make sure you communicate also if you switch very tough to go under and ochai could actually then dive without even being uh in trouble that's a great point Something that I didn't know. Well, what the Serbians mastered so, so much. These are the little details and mastery in this game. So we're down to 25 ticks. Japan in front. 
Iran have, oh, they cannot afford to waste any possession. That mishandling of the ball by Rahimi there might spell the end of Iran's run here in Singapore as Japan will take back over. They will utilize as much clock as possible. Yasuoka around, takes it back out. That's the matchup they want. To shoot, and they get the matchup they want. All right, rebound goes to Iran. They got two to tie. Oh, oh my goodness! Tie game! Japan can win it! Yasuoka! Oh. No! Wait a second. He had the foot on the line. Was his foot on the line? It could be. Adhajan pours what I thought was a two may actually be a one, and that will secure a win for Japan. I thought it was a two. Let's get a closer look if we can. Does he have Kevin Durantos or not? Now, wow, we knew that this game was coming down to the wire. And what a show this was. But you can look on the replay. I, from that angle, it looks like two feet behind him. From that angle. We need to get it from the side. Abhaj Janpour. We need to get it from the side where we're sitting from. With an absolute clutch bucket right there. And for Iran, they are just hoping that this counts as and two. And that's a two. That is a two. And that is a two. So we're tied at 12 apiece and going to overtime for the first time here on the final day. What about that little floater from Yasuoka just hitting the rim twice and oh. just handing up a tight short? He had a chance. Oh, uh, we'll see it right here. That's the perfect angle. But look, look how up there. Ag Aghajanpour oh. is clutch as an F1 driver. Big shot to keep his team alive. It's anybody's game as we go to overtime. Is Iran a team of destiny? The game was almost done. Well, they haven't lost the game yet here in Singapore. That's the reason. Are they a team of destiny? Wow. Wow. Incredible game. Yasuoka hits that, hits a big two, and sees it be responded to by Aghajanpour. Incredible. As we head into overtime, Iran will start with it. Here we go. Dalir Zahan moving right. Aghajanpour for the oh! win! Janpour with the heart of a lion in the Lion City. Iran is going crazy right now, and they should. You call your boo, he calls game. Y'all different. Aghajanpour with back-to-back -back twos to save the life of his team and his country in the quarterfinals. Iran remain unbeaten as they will head to the semis to do battle with New Zealand. Stealing it from Japan late. Mama, there go that man. Mama, there go that man. <laughs>